present are the jointness of the three services uh, is uh, lacking in many spheres. For example, though we have a joint uh, operational doctrine, we have a joint training doctrine, but to my mind, the, uh, the uh, implementation of these in, in, at the grassroots is possibly not to the what is to the best of what we can achieve. By the CDS being there, he will be able to supervise actually how the jointness and the synergy in the services is progressing. He will be able to pursue the services chiefs to cooperate and coordinate and synergize the uh, cooperation with each of them. He will be able to carry out the integration of various uh, training establishments, integration of various logistics establishments. He will be also able to integrate the procurement uh, procedures and procurement uh, actual procurements per se. Thereby, we, can, we will see that uh, a very good effective uh, procurement system will result in the services not buying the same equipment by, uh, uh, in a different uh, price level or uh, different models. So I think there are a host of factors which are going to impact the jointness. Finally, you find that uh, when the CDS is going to be, uh, as I perceive it, he will be uh, uh, responsible or having responsibility over the joint command, that is Andaman Nikobab Command, the space, cyber and the special forces. I think these are the combat multipliers or the force multipliers as we call it. And if we, he will be better able to integrate these very instruments which are very important in the modern for modern, modern warfare into the various services structures, into the service requirements, into their operational, logistic and the training structures. Well, for a start, I think we have to first define the role of the CDS before we come to this point about how the jointness will be enhanced. Because at the moment, the reality is that the three service chiefs in India are often described as invisible because they do not find any place in the rules of business as far as the government of India and its management of national security is concerned. Now, this is a big glaring gap. The defense of India, the responsibility devolves with the defense secretary of India, who is a civil servant. It's a big anomaly. Yes, we are a parliamentary form of government. Ultimately, it is the political kind of leadership represented by the Prime Minister and the Defence Minister who have political responsibility in Parliament. But the actual day-to-day -day kind of responsibility which is described in some detail in the rules of business, this is with the Defence Secretary and not with the Service Chiefs. So when the CDS is actually instituted, I think it's very important to define the locus. And how do you enable CDS? He should not become the equivalent of one more, maybe a five-star general equivalent, who is above the three service chiefs, but still has no locus, remains invisible. That would be unfortunate. I think we need a CDS who is empowered and who becomes part, part of the grid, part of the uh, governance of India and part of the higher defense management in terms of policy making. And then we can work out the other details about the execution and how the jointness is improved. At this point in time, I think each service is making the equivalent of its own war plan. A good example is, for instance, India is now on what is called as a Look East, Act East initiative with a lot of traction. Now, the Act East policy itself goes back to the time of Prime Minister Narasimha Rao, but it has been energized, no doubt, by Prime Minister Modi because of his own personal energy that he brings to various foreign policy initiatives. Now, when India is embarked upon look east, act east, I would also imagine defend east when required. Today, the anomaly is that when we talk about how India would deal with any kind of challenge from the east, the Indian army has its headquarters in Calcutta. That is where you have the eastern army with the CNC. The Indian Air Force operates out of Shillong which has a three-star officer, an air marshal who heads the Eastern Air Command. And we have the headquarters of the Eastern Naval Command in Vishakapatnam. Now, this is what I mean by saying that each of them is making their own plans because the reality is that the armed forces of India still have not internalized this whole ethos of jointness in their operational philosophy, in how they proceed making their own plans. Each of them are in silos. And Every professional that I have met to service chiefs when they retire, senior people, they acknowledge that this is a lacuna, but they are not able to overcome this. 
I expect that an enabled CDS who has the right locus and who has the kind of resources that we need. And I'm not talking about tanks and aircraft, resources even in terms of the political empowerment, the bureaucratic kind of endorsement. These would enhance the profile of the CDS and ensure that whatever assets India has are maximized because of jointness of effort and ultimately we respect the sanctity of the principle of unity of command. I think that's what the CDS would enable in a large way. Jointness has been the one of the KRA which was kept at the back of our mind when the government created the appointment of Chief of Defence Staff. A gap on communication, little lack of understanding between the functionality of all three services and if I may use the word a bit of mistrust which has been going on for a long time are the areas this, with this appointment they are going to be covered. Uh, even handed distribution of budget, uh, transmitting of capabilities and capacities and inculcating jointness by virtue of training, uh, joint exercises and of course interoperability, in enhancing the interoperability are going to be some of the tools which CDS may use to enhance jointness. That is what I feel with regard to his role related to jointness is concerned.